In this video, we will go through some basic field operations. The first thing we need to do is load the correct machine for the job. Here, we will use the 4 meters cultivator. The next thing we have to do is create a field. Give it a name. And you can add the date and time automatically if you wish. If all you are doing is working ground, and you don't care about boundaries, headland management or anything like that, you can put an AB line in at this time, and just start driving. There are a lot of features in AgOpen GPS if you do use boundaries. So we'll go through how to do that next. We'll begin by deleting our temporary AB line from the track selector. Highlight the one we wish to remove and press the red bin icon. Then, we'll delete our applied area. Next, we'll set a boundary. This can be done by loading a KML file from Google Earth, or by drawing on a map. But as you can see, the accuracy even if zoomed in is not great. We can delete the boundary we just made by selecting it and clicking the red bin icon. But by far, the best way to record is by driving the tractor. So to record, we hit the green plus button and then the steering wheel icon. The first thing to check is which side you will record on. If you drive clockwise around the field, you will want the left side, and vice versa. You'll notice that the width is half that of your implement, in this case our 4 meters cultivator. You can override that if you wish. Then. Simply press the record button. You will see the points being recorded. If you know that your field has a straight boundary, perhaps a fence, then you can pause recording until the end and get yourself into position to continue down the next side. If you accidentally add too many points, you can delete them. Perhaps your field has an obstacle such as a wet spot that you don't want to record around. You can pause, navigate around, and resume the recording. If your field doesn't have a straight edge, maybe some curves, simply drive around them. In this example, we'll assume the last line in the boundary is simply a straight edge and complete the boundary at this point. Notice that the beginning and end will automatically join up. Click the green tick to complete the boundary and notice that now the green field icon down the bottom is available to show you the size of field, amount of work done, rate of work and so on. Now, we'll see how we create a headland. Some of the more advanced options will be discussed later, but for now, we'll simply pick the number of passes to leave on the headland. This will be multiplied by our tool width, the 4 meters cultivator, and the headland that follows the boundary will appear. We can hide the display of the headland if we wish. Also, notice the lift indicator is now enabled and we'll see how we can use this to indicate when the machine should be raised or lowered. If you've built a machine board, it can perhaps even do that automatically. Next, we'll look at another way to make a headland. First, we'll remove the existing one and then choose the second headland option. Here, we can be more detailed in how we make the headland and vary the widths and styles on different edges. This section, the right-hand side of the field, has a straight section at the bottom and an angle off to the side. For our first line, we'll decide we don't need a headland. So we click two points on the line. 
as we have an AB curve selected, it will trace along the boundary perfectly without leaving any gap. Because we now change the number of passes to 1, the line does not move, because it was generated with a 0. For the top, because the number of passes to leave was at 1. That's what AOG generates. But we might decide 4 passes makes more sense so we choose the line again and it draws a new one. We then use the green arrows to select our mistake, and delete it. On the left hand side, we'll generate another curve and then we'll do the same for the bottom edge. Notice that once again, as we have curves selected with 4 meters, that's what we get. And as you would expect, it generates a curve to follow the bottom. Now, we have all lines crossing each other, so have enough data to generate a real headland, so click the generate button. Stick around till the end of the video and we'll show how to fix common errors here. Notice that our headland now matches what we drew, with no gap at all on the right hand edge. Our next consideration is to create tracks for AOG to follow. There are many ways to create a track just by driving it. The standard AB line is perhaps the most common. Pick your starting point with the A button, and drive far enough, maybe to the end of the row, and press your B button. The next is to take an angle from a position. Here, we are creating at 90 degrees, but with simple arithmetic, you could make the direction relative to current heading. The next is to record a curve. You select an A point and drive the path while AOG records it. Press B completes the path. And notice it has an infinite length in the heading you start and stop at. These are the simplest and most common ways to create a track. You can use the editor to create a track that matches your boundary exactly. And this is very easy to do with this button. Click the box to give it a name if you wish. You now have a set of concentric tracks that will move with you as you work the field. This box shows all the tracks you have defined. Here, you can rename them. You can copy them, reverse their direction, reorder the list, and you can enable or disable a track's ability to be switched to. This could come in handy if you regularly switch between only two tracks, but you have five saved. You can switch to a green track, but not to a red. Watch the right hand side of the screen. Because we had only one track selected, the switch arrows do not appear on the main screen. When you enable two tracks, they appear. From the track editor, we can also add lines that are unrelated to the boundary for example via lat, long, via KML file, traditional AB lines and curves and so on. Now let's try something a little more complicated with the track designer tool. This looks very similar to our headland tool and we will use our boundary to create the tracks. Notice that we don't have any widths or passes here. All lines are with reference to the boundary. For the top of the field, given it's mostly a straight line, we might decide we want an AB line to work it. On the right hand side, 
we might decide a curve makes more sense. The red square indicates tractor current position. You can see the number of tracks just above the red cross, and you can switch between the lines with the green arrows. For the bottom, however, let's mix it up and put a straight line. The left will have a curve as well. We now have four tracks that we can switch between with the green arrows at the side. When we return to the field, those green arrows also appear and you can switch between whichever track you'd like the tractor to follow. Notice it shows two lines. The red is the reference line, and the purple is your current working line, based on the position of the tractor. If we switch to the far edge of the field, you can see the same thing. The reference in red, and the purple is where the tractor currently sits. The same along the top, at the bottom of the field, we have our straight line against our curved boundary. So, now we have everything we need to begin working the field. Here, we might decide to do a straight run at the bottom first. We can set the painting automatically with the green icon on the right or manually with the yellow icon. You can also set these to come on automatically with steer and gauge, or with a work button. See previous videos for how to select this. Excuse the bad driving. It's hard to do in a simulator, even with an Xbox controller. There is nothing to stop us adding an extra track to work the curved border line. And by now, you will know the process for this. Notice the small gap, however, and that is due to how the AB lines are calculated depending where on the field you click them, something to watch out for. You can set your tractor to nudge or overlap to correct this, if all you are doing is straightening out a small section and we'll show later how to do this. Of course, if we are working the bottom of the field straight, it would make more sense to have set a straight headland too, and by now, you also know how to do this. Okay, so let's assume our headland is worked and we wish to begin the up and downs but this edge has a bend in it that we want to remove. So we can go to the track editor again and select a small section of the straight part, and select an AB line. Now we'll engage auto steer and start working. We can see at a glance that we only need to do a couple of rows to fill in that bend, and then we're good to continue straight for most of the field. We can also engage auto turn on the headland with a two lane skip. If the tractor decides it wants to turn the wrong way when it reaches the headland, simply click the turn icon to change it. Selecting the lift icon will give audio and visual indication for when it's time to raise and lower the implement. However, you will see here that in fact it does not give that indication. That's because it needs the auto paint on. See how the green arrow appeared when we enabled it. By setting auto painting with the green icon, it will start and stop drawing the work as we cross the headland automatically. Any objects of interest such as large stones can be marked by dropping a flag at your current location. A long press on the flag icon will allow you to select a different color and by clicking the up and down arrows in the flag dialog, you can select which one you would like to indicate direction and distance to. Long press the flag again to bring the box up and select any items you wish to delete.
instead of full lane skip, you might want to create a pattern that loops back to create a closer coverage using this button. If you have already driven a boundary, you can still use digital maps to provide a backdrop, and here's how to do it. We'll look at how to fix an issue if you're getting errors when trying to generate a headland. Here, we'll create lines all the way around the field. But notice the one at the bottom doesn't close the polygon. We can't generate headland, so we delete the line in error and add a new one. But it still won't close. If you look closely, it appears the line on the bottom might be a little short. So we see it's the blue box, and we click the blue plus plus button to grow it. Now, we have a closed polygon and can form the headland. Suppose you are using a trailed implement and have got yourself lined up for the next round, but AOG shows it at an angle, when you can see it's clearly straight behind you. Simply press the alignment button for AOG to tidy itself up. And did you notice, that with a wider implement, we didn't have to create a new track? It took the width into account. You already know that you can switch between tracks using the green buttons, but if you engage the circle button, AOG will jump to the track that fits your current heading. Note that you have to disable auto steer and line yourself up manually for this to happen. Now we'll look at the nudge feature. From the top, there are buttons to jump a half width over to nudge in a preset amount. In this case, 20 centimeters. To recenter the line at your current location and to return to the reference position, which is to say, before you nudged it at all. and we can also move the reference line. You'll remember that when we changed implement width, we didn't have to put in a new track because the reference line was stored relative to the boundary. We can change that reference line, so it is no longer based on the boundary. You can see that here, and notice that you can also see it in the track editor. This new reference will also be saved with the field, unlike the temporary blue nudge you saw a moment ago. And lastly, We'll look at the Engage Here function. When enabled, the reference line will be moved automatically to wherever you are when you engage Auto Steer. It's an automatic nudge, in other words. And that's it for this video. If we missed anything, let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and watch the playlist regularly for new additions. See you next time!